<laughs> here we are once again. It's Thursday. Here's Dave. Like I promised, get over here, Dave. Not only do we have a pink shirt, not only do we have a pink pocket square, but because you're here, this goes deeper in terms of pink. Deep, way deep. And it's not just your your complexion. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's <laughs> the inside of your sport coat. Wow. wow. Look at that. What do you think of that? Uh, somewhere in here is... Oh, they even put my name in there in case I forget who I am. Yeah, he can check. Dave Safransky. Yeah. And it's got to be a really long tag. It goes all the Safransky way around my back. <laughs> has a lot of consonants all together. Uh, but he's here to answer your financial questions if you have them or uh, follow up on any you heard today on the live show. I feel bad for people like you. Like when you were a kid... I feel bad for me? Wait, oh. just slow down. I feel bad for people like you. No, no. I'm like, supposed to stop there. Can okay, you, Ross Perot. Can you imagine being five and having to learn to spell your name? Oh, right? my goodness. That's got to be hard. Poor Dave. It was traumatic. I, in fact, you, were, you were like Bob Smith. And Dave, they got it so easy. So friends. Yo, my goodness, that's <laughs> messed you probably up. Wrote Davey S, right? Davey. Yeah, I always go by Davey. Does your mom call you Davey? No, nobody does, Bri. Nobody. Never did. Your Dave? brother? I don't think anybody calls me. They they call me other things that I can't repeat here. Uh, but <laughs> like my dad's name is William, but his mother called him Billy. Billy. Nobody else called him Billy. Uh, Guys, ask your financial questions. We're waiting. And what were you called? Brian -y? Like, what was your nickname? Do you have a nickname? See, one of the reasons Brian is such a boring, awful name is because there's really only, there's nothing to do with it. I, we should just call him Brain because a lot of people he likes that. his name Brain. That's what Janet Parshall calls you, right? <laughs> one time we got an email from Janet Parshall, like we were exchanging emails. Mm hmm well, she was saying, pick me up a coffee. <laughs> <laughs> but she wrote brain, because people always mix it up. And I was like, "That's I've made it. Janet Parshall called me brain. Yeah, you think I'm smart, don't you? Uh, it happens to me regularly. People will just mix those up. That's the, the most interesting part of my name. You look like a brain. <laughs> Looks like a brain. So I'm That's like a good thing. That's good. small and wrinkly. I'm uh, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> pale and, and like really fragile. Gray, gray. I have a hard candy shell on the outside, but I'm... Soft and mushy on the inside. Yeah. So while we get to financial questions, can you repeat for us the, because Brian had it all wrong. Usually. The percentages that we should aim for when it comes to tithing. <laughs> yeah, Brian, I, you, you are not his helper. Do you see Tith what I deal with? Tithing, savings, and mortgage. Yeah, I've always thought, you know, we start at 10% with our tithe, and that's to our home church. That's what we're, and people say, well, I don't have a home church to give to. Well, you need to find one. That's that's what believers do, right? We go to this corporate worship where you're known and you can know people, and uh, you have a walk with people, and they can hold you accountable. A lot of people don't like to be held accountable. Yeah, no. My but wife's here. Here, right here. Right. He got. He, can no, you tell like him? On the on Facebook Live. His wife is here. He got in trouble like two days ago. And then she was like, watch when you get home. She was saying all that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but, but to finish our previous conversation, Sarah really is the best wife. So, right? yeah, ever. Yeah, ever. Ever. Uh -huh. ever. Yeah. By the way, because she's here, I saw your family pictures. Oh, on yeah. Facebook. Those were really nice. You guys, Aww. you somehow you two produce really good looking kids. And Sarah. <laughs> I know it's Sarah. Yeah, mostly, yeah, yeah, it's Sarah. But you have some good looking kids. It's all you really do. Sarah looks so mother. beautiful. But talking about tithing, my son actually asked me this week, and I know this is an issue for some people. You said it has to be to your home church. What do you say to people that are like, well, I like tithing, and so I give to a cause I really care about? Yeah, I like that idea, and I think it's important to do those things, but I would do it with money that's over your 10%, because your church needs that money. You know, they're paying pastors and light bills and, and things like that, so we're, we're called to give to our home church. I think you our, give to your home church first. First, first. So, like, when we go to the Moody Men's Conference and, and there's a collection taken, you're not giving that from your tithe. That's a love offering that's above and beyond what you're tithing. And so if you accidentally go over the 10%, don't freak out. You're not going to die and your finances aren't going to sink. And I do believe that God rewards people. And, I, and I, I hate the prosperity doctrine. It's not the truth. Because God can bless people in a variety of ways, right? And when we're faithful with our finances and we're faithful with our devotion and family and things like that, I think God, we know that those who are faithful, God will make their enemies even live at peace with them. 
And so just be faithful. Just do the things that you know we should be doing. And give the love offering. Give the 10%. And then saving for retirement, I think we need to be over 10%. I think we need to be somewhere around 15% or greater. And that means you have to work a budget that's going to allow you to do that. And so you have to live within a budget. And most people have a really hard time living in a budget. But it takes practice. It takes a little work. You can do it. And you're living in that budget. And then you're going to spend about 25 to 30% on your mortgage. So you know, there's something about what, like, when things are rolling, I want to call it like a moving train or something, that's difficult to redirect. And when you bring up budget, I know it comes up a lot for people. I think it's hard when you've lived without a budget. Yes. To then say, oh, let me set one. Like, where do, most people. She loves to spend money, Dave. <laughs> Len, Listen, I will say, I Len is the smart one in my house, and he's the more mature one. He's like, in a way, he's almost like my dad. Like, he's the one that's like, hmm. Janelle, calm down. He's old and grumpy. Janelle, let's be mature <laughs> about this. He yells at people to get off his lawn. <laughs> I do. But. A lot of people have the, they want to live within a budget and they don't even know where to start. So can you, I know yeah. you're asked this a lot, but can you mm -hmm. help people with this? Yeah. So if you got that train rolling down the tracks, the first thing you need to do, Brian, is slow your roll. Slow your roll, yo. <laughs> roll. Yo. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> Let me just say this. It is much easier to start correctly Yeah. and work from there than it is to... 10 years down the road, stop everything and try and fix all the mistakes. But if that's where we're at, that's where we're at. Because it so comes from habit, right? Your yeah, budget comes from bad habits. Right, and yeah. patterns. So what? where do you start? By the way, pause on that before you start. Good morning to Teresa says hello. Leslie says hello to Hi, us. Leslie. Hello, Leslie. Good to have you here. So and uh, this person, Mark, hello, Mark and Cammy. We don't see you a lot. Hi, Cammy and Deborah. Okay. And Robert is here, who works for the Social Security Robert Administration. Ben, so straighten up. That's He's about to right. take away all your benefits. <laughs> He's going to take away all your benefits. <laughs> all of them. They're gone. He's going to give them to me. He probably does have that power. Oh, that finger. <laughs> you never contributed. <laughs> <laughs> How did this happen? So anyway, sorry. So what, what, what's, what's step one when you're building a budget? Well, step one, uh, if, if, you're, if you're down this road, and, and things are a mess, right? And I've seen this before, where things are just a mess. You're like, wow, this is like a 78 car pile up <laughs> on the highway in, in fog. We just gotta stop. We, we gotta stop and take a snapshot of what's going on and kind of unpile this wreckage one piece at a time, even when it's painful. Now, when I gotta admit, there are times when I'm in my office and I'm sitting in my chair, and I know- That was more of a throne, but okay. <laughs> I know that there's going to be an argument between husband and wife. And sometimes I just got to sit back and let it work itself out, right? Well, you spend this. Well, you do that. You do. And after a few minutes, I could say, can you guys hear yourselves? You, right? you, by the way, your wife is not your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. You're supposed to be working as a team. And the enemy of your enemy is your friend. That's right. Uh, that's right. Uh, so what, what we do <laughs> yeah. is we unpile the wreckage. We kind of lay it out there and we triage this thing. We say, okay, where are we going to start? And calculate income. Calculate. Right. We know what our income is. That's have easy. Have to expenses. Right. Have to expenses. And, we, and again, we back our way into a realistic budget. Now, at first, it is going to be really uncomfortable. It's like going on a diet. Okay. I, just, I went to the doctor a few months ago and he said, we're going to do blood work on you. I said, that's fine. I'm, I'm as healthy as a horse, whatever that means. The blood work comes back and he says, oh, by the way, uh, oh, by the way, Mr. Healthy, your cholesterol is a little high. I said, well, how high is it? We don't have a chart that goes that high. <laughs> I'm like, well, there's, there's something wrong. And uh, so I had to change my diet, right? I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I have to eat things that I don't like. Kale. No, I will not do that. Fake Kale meat. is proof that there's evil in the world. Fake meat. I will not eat fake meat. Okay. I will not do it. I don't mind cow farts. Uh, <laughs> So, but I got used to it, and now I kind of like it. And that's the way, when you see the success of living wisely with your finances, when you see what that brings, the financial stress that's taken out of your life, you're going to love it, and you're going to love me for creating that argument in my office. You will call me back and say, David, thank you for making us do this. But I didn't really make you do it, right? Right. 
we're, we were coming up to this point where there was going to be a disaster. Somewhere, if you're living unwisely with your money, at some point, there's a point of no return. And you don't want to get there. So we can get to you before you get to that. There's hope for you. So hi, first Heidi. Step, hi, Barb. First step is taking a snapshot, right? Take a snapshot. Well, we okay. got to go to Rachel's question. This Rachel is a really says, good question. What do you say to the ones who the bills don't get covered if they tithe? I want to tithe and I absolutely have a budget to an obsessive point, but I am on disability and things just don't add up. Yeah, th this is a tough one because this is real. I've had this question before. And <clears throat> so uh, tithing in, in its simplest form is money, right? We need money. We need to do this. Uh, the church has to operate. It's a sign of obedience when we tithe. I think this is a, a, a place where I'm going to sit down with my pastor, and I'm, I'm just going to lay it out for pastor, and I'm going to say, I want to give pastor, and I want to give what the Bible is telling me to give, but I might not be able to do it monetarily right now until things change a little bit. Is there other ways that I could volunteer and help and maybe lift the burden from the church a little bit, if that's possible? So I want to... I, I always you have to handle like, the debts. Yeah, I always like when people are proactive. Okay, I want to be proactive. I want to attack the problem before it attacks me. Right. And so going to pastor and maybe bringing this up and because, you know, God knows where your heart is. God, God knows these things. And I, and I want her to be able to tithe. I want her to be able to tithe. Maybe it's a smaller amount right now. Maybe we can't do, just because of the way things are, we can't do it. And I'm not going to tell you to tithe yourself into bankruptcy. I just, philosophically, I cannot do that. And so maybe God has something else for you, but we have to find out what it is. So we're going to go to the pastor, maybe the pastor's wife. We're going to sit down. We're going to say, "What? help me walk through this uh, spiritually so that I feel like I'm honoring God with what I'm doing. And I think you'll find that the problem is solvable. Sounds good, Deborah. Good I like it. Thank Deborah you. says that You're is welcome. hard. God knows your heart. He does, he does say to trust him. Tithe is... What is that, Brian? Old Testament. Old Testament and start a starting place. When I started, I gave way less than little by little. I was able to give more. I'd, I'd suggest give to God first, start small, and then add on. Yeah, I you like that, that, Dave. I do like that, yes. Because what happens is we, we pick a number. Whatever that number is, it's irrelevant. We pick a number, we start there. And then maybe every couple of months, we raise it a percent or two, uh, especially if you're making more money. And pretty soon, you're there. You're there. But remember, don't be legalistic. Tithe, when we get legalistic, when we say, I must give 10%, I'm a robot, I'm a Christian robot, you're being legalistic, you're missing the point. We give out of our heart. We want to give, we want to be obedient. 10% is a starting place. Now, if you're, if, if you're at 5%, now, realistically, most Christians, they're at 2% or less. So if the church gave... We'd never have to have a fundraising campaign because we have more money. Our coffers would be overflowing. And so just get there. Put it on your heart. Put it in your prayer list. Put it on a piece of paper that you're looking at. i got to remember to really start working on my tithe. You know, but don't go deeper into debt just to tithe. No. Go deeper into your budget to tithe. Right. Work your budget. There are things that I buy that I do not need. You? Yeah, believe it or not. Like what? <laughs> You know, uh, you know, golf, golf clubs, pink shirts. Oh, yeah, I, 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 squares. I bought a, I bought a set of golf clubs one time, and I'm driving, and my wife is in the car, and somebody texts me, and I said, "Hey, could you read this? I don't want to uh, text and drive." And it's, and she says, uh, "The text says, since you got a new set of golf clubs, can I use your old ones? Oh, you got new oh, golf clubs? Oh, oh yeah! Uh, I, I was gonna to tell, tell you about yeah. that. Like, never. <laughs> so." Yeah, I've learned the hard way. Uh, yeah, golf clubs, golf. But, I mean, the list is endless. But Dave, a budget that allows for zero fun is not going to work. Sometimes that's where we're at, bro. Sometimes mm. that's where we're at. You, Ooh. We have obligations. We have kids. We have house payments. Zero fun. You know, Here God really go. wants you to be happy, Brian. That's what the Bible is about. Brian's happiness. If Brian isn't happy, then the Bible must not be true. God does not care about your happiness. God's goal in life is not for you to be happy. God's goal in life is for you and me and Janelle and Kelly to be obedient. I know what's coming next. <laughs> oh. So 
Our God wants us to be obedient. God wants us to, to bring other people into the fold. <laughs> That's what God wants. He does not care if you go to Disneyland. But, but all things being equal, if you can, you should budget like fun things, Dave. All things being equal, if you can. There were times if when Lynn had his way, she would never have fun for the rest of her life. Never. But this but is why God put Len. Me, I'll say that. This is why God put <laughs> Len and Janelle together yes. because they balance each other. We do. They balance each other, and yes, I think it's like I love the fact that my wife would make me take family vacations. Yeah. I did not want to go because I'm like I got to work. Well, no, I need to spend time and build my family too. We need times like that, and even if it's. Even if it's not like an extravagant vacation or whatever, you're spending time together. You're you're building into your kids' lives. You and that's need to go to Lush at the mall and they get can your get impossible mask. burger. I will I will not eat. Well, I am gonna try it. I wanna try it. But I mean seriously, if Len had his way, she would never have anything new and would never spend money on anything. We'd this, be riding his truck from 1996. The kids would be pushing it because it wouldn't work anymore. Yeah. And you wouldn't care. <laughs> but this is why they're together, God. <laughs> God knew that Len needed this. Yes. But, but, but you could put entertainment as a line item in your budget. Yes. Yeah, well. Yes. But now, if you're saying to me, well, I, I can't make my house payment, I can't tithe, I can't do this, but we're going to the movies and getting a $9 popcorn, I have to say, you know what? A, a long walk in the park would have been okay too. Just hold hands with your wife. Go go do something that is very inexpensive. There was a time in my marriage where Levon and I had five dollars a week that we could spend however we wanted. Five dollars. That's not even a coffee at Starbucks. And that would have been my cup. I would have been like, hey babe, let's yeah. go to Starbucks. Did I ever talk about the time that Brian made me pay for Starbucks in Chicago? Wow. I got something Brian. real expensive. Real it had sprinkles on it, no. extra whipped cream. <laughs> it was such a foo foo drink. I it thought, was foo-foo, and yeah. he's not even into Starbucks. He was fine. That's awesome. yeah. But I walk out of there. I, I just spent like twenty eight bucks on coffee, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, we don't need anybody." <laughs> I was worth it. Let me just say, I was worth it. <laughs> you were right. You were. Because <laughs> here we are, right? Here we uh, are. Huh? When's the last time you bought me Starbucks, Dave? That's the question. Your entertainment budget should allow for that. For you to have Starbucks from you. Yeah, you know, if there was anything within like four miles of this station, I would buy a cup of coffee, but there it's is. a truck stop. Uh, Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> hello. It looks amazing. Teresa says we used to roll pennies and go get ice cream cones. I love it. We, I love it. Sarah had this big change jar, and we were going to go, uh, you know, dump it in one of those machines or whatever and have yeah. it cut it up. Like and the bank was like, no, we don't do that. you got to give us rolls. So they handed her all the paper to make rolls. We oh. Were, like, we're not doing this. <laughs> Oh, we're not going yeah. no, to put all these things If in you place. roll pennies and you come to Avon, where my office is, to get an ice cream, it's not going to be enough. You can't even buy the cone. You, you, there are two ice cream places in Avon where it's like I've seen a, a $12 cone. Like, what is going on? What, one's like corner. What's that one? Um, cream. Oh, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. Mitchell's is also like that. Mitchell's is like that. And and they never change good. your ice cream flavors. They, they don't need the to. They're the key amazing. Lime pie ice cream is all you need to get there. That's yeah, all you need they're to get. amazing. They're worth it. Amazing. <laughs> I don't use that word a lot. Not, not a lot amazes me, to be honest. Brian and Janelle show. I have a PhD in life application studies. I've seen just about everything. So you got to work really hard. I think none of that statement was true. I have, I have an application studies degree and I've seen everything. None of that was true. Do, do I actually <laughs> have a PhD? No, not from a real college. And but I've, I've awarded it myself. No. I've awarded myself an honorary doctorate. In life application no. studies. I've been trying to get an honorary doctorate from Moody for years. <laughs> they, just, they do the same thing we're doing right now. They we'll just laugh. look at them and laugh. <laughs> when I was a producer, we'd have the president of Moody on and I'd give some suggested questions. I'd always put like five, and then number six was always, when will you give Brian an honorary doctorate? You know what? I'm having uh, dessert with Mark Job Ooh. when he comes to town. Wow. I'm going to bring it up to you. You're going to slide that in? I'm going to slide. Honorary PhD? Uh, just, uh, have it, are there any questions you're saying? And I, and I am going to say, I have a friend named Brian who hmm. would love an honorary PhD from Moody. Would, would you have to call me doctor then? Would we? We probably. We should. Right? Dr. Brian. Can you imagine? I'm going to get one just so you have to. <laughs> 
How about that? Oh. Excuse me, Janelle. It's not Brian. You're going to be it's one of those people. Dr. Brian. You got, yeah. Oh, my Dr. goodness. Dr. B. <laughs> you just call me Doc if you prefer. <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right. I think that pretty much does it for us unless we have any more questions here. See any new ones? Rob answered. He said he would never do that to you. What? Take away, take away the... Uh, what is it? Social he wouldn't security. take away my social security. Yeah. And... We see his picture, so we know. Like. Yeah. We know who he is. Rob would give me extra social security, I think, mm -hmm. if I really asked nicely. He would never do that if his boss is watching. He would never do that. All right, All right. guys. I think that'll do it for us. Oh. That was good. <laughs> I wasn't looking. <laughs>